My name is Keith. Today we're going to show you how to change a set of tracks on a John Deere skid steer. This series uh, of steps can be used on almost all track type skid steers. So first thing we're going to do, make sure we're on a level stable surface. We're going to get a bunch of blocks. You want the blocks under a solid part of the frame so that you don't collapse any uh, pans underneath, you don't bend anything or do any damage. Once that is done, we need to get into the machine, raise the boom up, tilt the buckets down, and when you boom down, it'll lift the entire machine and the, and the tracks up into the air so you can work on them. Okay, now as you can see, we have the whole track in the air. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna put slack in the track. So take this little plate off. Inside this hole is your track adjuster. When you pump grease in, it tightens the track. There's a grease valve in here that when you pull it out, it allows the grease to release out of the track adjuster. There's two ways you can get this track to come loose if it doesn't come down by itself. You can stand on the track and sometimes that will bring the track adjuster in. In this case, it doesn't seem to be doing the trick 100%. So you're gonna need an operator in the machine and then you take a bar, you just put it in the track like this, get your operator to turn the track backwards, which will suck the track adjuster back in. Now the track is off to a point uh, that we can manhandle this thing or use a forklift or another skid steer even with forks to get it completely off. You can put this on by hand, it's very heavy. The whole track weighs between three and 400 pounds. Sometimes you can manhandle it on by hand. If you can't, you can use a forklift or you can use a skid steer with forks on it. You want to get the track on the sprocket first. Once it's on the sprocket, we're going to get it, the, the, the links, which are these spike pieces, uh, in between the uh, back idler to where it's supposed to be. And then we'll deal with the front after that. So now we have our track on the proper spot on the sprocket. We give it a little kick the bottom will fall underneath as well. You can see the bottom is where it's supposed to be now. Now we have to deal with the front. As you can see now, I got it just starting. We've got it halfway on. It doesn't always work on the first try, but if you try it a couple of times, you'll get it. Now the front is on. The back accidentally slipped off on me. So we'll get the back on just like that. And it, this track is on. Next step is to adjust the track tension. We want to clean up our grease valve that we pulled out in the beginning. We want to put it back in. Make sure it's good and tight. Okay. The next step is to adjust your track. That grease valve you put in is also a grease nipple. Put your grease gun on it. Pump the track up. Now we've adjusted the track to almost tight here. Um, the way you tell if this track is tight, you want to be able to take three fingers and you want to put them in between where the roller rides on the top of the track here and the bottom of the roller where the track is going to sit lay against. With the track in the air, you want to fit about three fingers in there. Feels nice and snug. We're a little bit loose, so we're going to a couple more pumps. That's about the tension that you want. This track is now done. You can move on to the other side.